Hello, and welcome to the fourth tutorial in the First Person Tutor with Unity's new input system tutorial series. In the last two videos, we set up a basic shooting mechanic, rapid firing and reloading. In this tutorial, we will create a shotgun effect by shooting multiple bullets at once. Just before we start, these videos take a long time for me to plan, script, record and edit, so if you could just take a second to hit like and show your support, that would be really appreciated. If you find this video helpful, Please consider subscribing, as only 7% of you currently are, and every new subscriber means a lot to me. Without further ado, let's get started. Here I have opened the project from the previous tutorial, which this tutorial will be following off from. Let's start by making the gun shoot multiple bullets per shot. To do this, let's go into our gun script. And I'll actually start by organising our variables, since we're starting to have quite a long list of them. I'll create a header, with a square bracket and header. Then inside parentheses, I'll call this general stats. In here, I'll put our range. You can move each line by holding alt and the up and down arrows. Our damage, our max ammo and current ammo, our fire rate, reload time and reload weight. Under this, I'll create a new header. This will be for rapid fire. In here, I'll put the boolean rapid fire and also our rapid fire weight. Next, I'll create a new header. This will be header shotgun. And in here, I'll say serialized field bool shotgun is equal to false and also a serialized field integer for the bullets per shot. By default, I'll set this to 6. Now we have to modify our shoot function to account for the shotgun effect. I'll leave the current ammo minus minus at the top, and then I'll say if shotgun 4 and then double tab to autocomplete, int i equals 0, i is less than bullets per shot, i++. plus plus. So this will simply iterate this loop the number of times we put in bullets per shot. And then I'll take all of these lines and move them up into this for loop. Now else, so if this is not a shotgun, I'll copy and paste this into here. This should already give us our basic shotgun effect, and we should be able to test it in the editor already. Select our shotgun, uncheck rapid fire and check shotgun, then let's hit play. If I shoot, you'll see that the cube is destroyed in two shots, because we're actually shooting six bullets per shot. A problem with our current approach, however, is all of the bullets are super accurate, so there's no shotgun spread. So let's create a bullet spread next. I'll return back to the gun script, and at the top, inside the general stats, let's create a serialized field float inaccuracy distance. By default, I'll set this to 5. Now we need a new function to get our shooting direction. So at the bottom, I'll create a new function, which will return a vector 3, and I'll call this get shooting direction. Inside here, I'll say vector 3 target pause is equal to camera position plus the camera forward multiplied by our range, since camera.forward is a unit vector. Then I'll set the target position is equal to a new vector 3. For the x, I'll say target pos dot x plus random dot range, the negative inaccuracy distance to the positive inaccuracy distance. I'll copy and paste this line twice for the y and z, so y and z, then take off the last comma and add a closing parenthesis and semicolon at the end. Underneath this, I'll say vector3 direction is equal to the target position minus our camera position, and finally return direction dot normalized as we want a unit vector. Now in the shoot method, I'll change our direction from cam dot forward to get shooting direction. And also remember to change it down here. We can return back to the editor now to test it out.
you can see that the bullet spread appears to be working. One thing that I think would be quite nice to have though, is some kind of bullet trail or laser for us to see where the bullets are actually going. Let's exit play mode and create this. The first thing I'll do is create a new empty object, which I'll press F2 to rename and call it laser. First, I'll reset its transform and then add a line renderer. I'll set its width to 0 0.03, its color to red on the left, and a darker or faded red on the right, and then its material to sprites default. I'll drag and drop this into our assets folder to make it a prefab, then delete it from the scene. Let's return back into our gun scripts now, and at the top I'll create a new header. This will be header laser. In here I'll create a serialized field game object this time, and I'll call this laser. Then underneath another serialized field transform for the muzzle. This is where the laser will spawn from. At the bottom, let's create a new method. This will be void create laser with a vector 3 as an input, and this will be the end position. In here, I'll say line renderer lr as the name is equal to instantiate our laser dot get component line renderer. After this, I'll say lr dot set positions to a new vector 3 array size of 2 and the components will be muzzle dot position and end. To see what's really happening here, I'll return back into the editor and drag and drop our laser into the scene view. In the inspector, you'll see a variable called positions, which is an array of vector 3s. What we are doing in the script here is setting these positions, the first one to the muzzle position, so you can imagine, for example, that could be here, and the second one to the end position, or where we're shooting at. If I just set these to some random values, you can see that this is what our laser will look like. I'll delete this from the scene view now, and return back into the script. In the shoot function, we need to edit it to take the laser into account. In this if statement, if we do hit something, I'll call create laser, and set the end position to the hit dot point. Now else, so if we didn't hit anything, and here we need to know the shooting direction. So I'll take this get shooting direction function and turn it into a variable with vector3 shooting dir equal to get shooting direction. Then I'll pass shooting dir into the raycast. And I'll also say create laser with the end position being cam dot position plus shooting dir multiplied by range. Now we also have to change this down here, so I'll just do the same thing, copying and pasting this, substitute get shooting direction with the shooting dir variable, and then else create laser with cam dot position plus shooting dir multiplied by range, and also don't forget to create laser here with the hip dot point. Now let's return back to the editor and select our shotgun. We can assign the laser prefab to its slot, but we don't actually have a muzzle yet. So hit shift alt n with the shotgun selected to create a child object, then rename this to muzzle. Let's zoom into it a bit, and then position it on the muzzle of your weapon. For me, that will be just about here. Now select the gun again, and assign the muzzle to its slot. I'll uncheck the shotgun, and check the rapid fire again, then hit play to test it out. You can see that this is working, but we want the lasers to fade out and destroy themselves after a short amount of time, so let's fix that. Exit play mode, and go back into the gun script. In here, we'll need a new variable, 
This will be a serialized field float and the fade duration. I'll set this equal to 0 0.3 by default. Now at the bottom, let's create a new coroutine. This will be I enumerator fade laser. And this will take in a line renderer called LR. I'll set float alpha equal to 1. Then while alpha is greater than 0, which would make it completely transparent, I'll set alpha minus equals time dot delta time divided by the fade duration. Then I'll set lr dot start color equal to a new color lr dot start color dot r for red, then lr dot start color dot g for green, and lr dot start color dot b for blue and finally passing in alpha. I'll do the same for the end color. I'll just copy and paste it this time with end color, then copy lr.end color in all three of these spaces, then finally yield return null to wait for one frame. Finally, in the create laser function, I'll say start coroutine, fade laser, passing in lr. We should be able to return back to the editor now to test it out. I'll hit play. And now when I shoot, you can see exactly where the bullets are going. It doesn't look great on the shotgun, but we can see where the bullets are which can be useful for debugging. If you want it to look nicer, you can tweak the colours and it can actually look pretty good. This is the same method I used to create a laser sniper in my game Life is Short. I also think that it looks a lot better on single shot weapons than the shotgun, and I'll just quickly demonstrate that with a rapid fire. That's it for this tutorial. If you're enjoying the series, make sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe, and let me know what you want to see next in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.